Hey everybody, welcome to another tutorial. In this one we're going to be going over IA Scatter and we're going to build something and have some fun. If you don't have IA Scatter, it is a super powerful geometry node based add-on. You can pick this up on the Blender Market. It's $9.99 right now, it's super low priced and this thing is a hidden treasure. Like, I don't see anybody talking about it, don't see any tutorials on it, and so I had just spent the last month going over it, you know, in whatever time I had between my Philogix PBR uh, tutorials, which also I've got the new 3.1 beta version of Philogix. It's not out yet, but like I said, I collaborate um, with the creator of Philogix PBR Painter Pro, and I've got this here with the updates in it. He's got a, a new painting panel, new specular workflow, new channel settings. I'm going to go over all this and make a tutorial so everybody can benefit. He changed the data structure. So previous versions it won't be compatible with. So this is a new one that's just for the new Blender that's come out recently, which is 3.3. And I'm sure it'll work at 3.4, but I'll beta test all that. And the brush manager, guys, you have no idea what this is going to do. And the export uh, settings have been updated. I was, I went over <laughs> a few things that were issues with him, you know, questions that come back from uh, YouTube and everything else for those little beta tests, those little short videos I do. And yeah, we got this thing worked out. And I, hey everybody, just a quick little teaser for the tutorial. What I did is I took a plane, turned it into a circle, added a double stack geometry node setup whole lot of nodes in here but very simplified with the ia scatter and remember it is an add-on so you can begin from the end panel which is awesome i made two separate collections and enabled ray casting on each one and then created a target object that actually will help me place geometry through ray casting now None of the origins are correct on this because I just threw it together real quick. But if you follow through the tutorial, and I know it's a little lengthy, but if you follow to the end, there's going to be a ton of great tips in here and a lot of cool things. So like I say, these were trees and these were buildings and I didn't like that. I could invert them or put them all together or switch from the inside to the out. And then if I take up the top view, obviously, if you understand anything about ray casting, then you can start to see the power of the IA scatter node group and the add-on in total. Then if I really wanted to get crazy, I could come down here and add a simple wind to my trees, turn up the wind speed, bring up the strength, come over to my little timeline here in the corner and press play. And I inverted these real quick because they didn't look like trees. But anyhow, these are the animations and with the wind speed strength scale and then two different wind settings plus you can adjust this in pretty much any way you want and make a lot of really cool things happen you can actually turn the speed way down give it a bit more of a subtle offset change the wind direction so something looks like it's blowing and then if you want to get really crazy you can turn on camera calling and put a camera in the scene And I always jump a little ahead of myself. I'll go ahead and select that as the camera for that and select it for the other one. So as I'm moving the camera around, I don't have all those resources being zapped in the viewport. Anyhow, stick around. This is going to be, uh, like I said, a little bit of a lengthy tutorial, but it's going to be really fun and chock full of good information. I'll see you on the other side. All right, buddy, let's jump right in. We're going to need to create a plane, so I'll just drop one in, and we're going to want to subdivide this. So I'll jump into edit mode and click subdivide, then I'm going to hit shift R1 two times. And then I want to hit W again, go to loop tools, turn that into a circle. Looks pretty good. Now I can subdivide this, so I'll throw a subdivision surface on, hit it twice, and I will apply that. Now we've got this nice clean geometry and I need all these cuts in here so that IA scatter has something to work with. So now I'll just hide that and what we're going to do is real quick I just want to build out a few quick buildings. 
So shift A, cube. And you could do this a bunch of different ways if you want. Uh, you could just, you know, do some insets, bring them up, inset them again. You don't have to do anything spectacular. And you can make some little chintzy buildings like this if you want. And then you can grab some of the faces. And let me just hit forward slash and bring that in. I hate the zoom thing. And then I'll double tap I so I can get these nice separated insets. And I'll extrude these up. And I can inset and bring them down. I got this funky looking building here, right? And we can just keep doing that all day long. And what I'll do is I'll make one very vanilla. And then I'm going to actually go for my... There we go. I'm going to go for my uh, grid modeler and hit that one time. So let's extrude faces along nominals. I think that's a, a pretty clean way of doing it. There we go. That's starting to look kind of sci-fi-ish. And you know it wouldn't be the same unless we added a few bevels. So I'm going to grab this loop set here. And I think it got it all. Control B. And I'll just add a nice little chamfer in right there. Let's see if I can grab the bottom as well. Or is that going to... Yeah, it's not letting me do it. So let me just grab everything. Hit M and merge by distance. Removed 16 vertices. Very nice. So that cleaned that up and should select around the edges now. Oh, it looks like it's still going to be a pain. But it did clean up the geometry a little bit. So I'll add a bevel here unless it's going to get crazy. There we go. Now we're looking better. I feel like I'm just doing this very rudimentary. And I might add like one cut in there just so it doesn't look too crazy. All right, so that's not too bad. That's going to be one building. And what I will do is I'm going to add in another cube. And if you have some presets or something like that, or you just want to throw in a cube and skip this part, you're more than welcome to. I'll jump into edit mode with this. I'm going to pull up grid modeler. And that is so funny. I didn't realize I had edge select on. <laughs> It's very specific, man. I love this thing. All right, so let me escape out of there. Go to face select. Grab this and try it again. All right, that's a lot better. And let me increase my resolution a little bit. And I'm going to take the mouse to the center. And instead of just drawing a regular line with it, I'm going to hit C for circle. And I'll bring up something like that. That's good. I'll left click place it. Then I'll right click to go to the secondary menu. And then left click on my object. And hit G to move it. And then I'll center it. Hit D to duplicate it. D to duplicate all of that. And place it and hit Q. And that's going to give me a cut and or all these other options. So if you don't if you have a laptop, I solved my problem because I emulate the keyboard and I need my one through zero buttons for not only the camera view, but all the other stuff, right? So, I mean, if I wanted to, I could just put this on, create face, you know, then I can create these uh, faces, but I like the Boolean uh, cut, excuse me, not the slice. I can kind of bring this up and down. So I've got the Blender Exact Solver on. It'll remember your last settings because one of my practice cuts, it, it was all hollow right here, but you can just solve that by putting on the Blender Exact Solver. And so I'll bring this down and make that like a nice little bullion cut there. Then I can grab the top, pull up grid modeler again. And I'm feeling like these circles today. So I'll put in another one, drop it, right click, select it, and I'll hit B. And I can bevel it now if I want, make it like a much nicer close to a circle. I'll hit Q. And then I'm just going to create this little face right here. And now I can select that face and extrude it up. And so now I've got the square and circle. I didn't really have to do a whole lot, right? Kind of liken this. A little hard surface modeling in the middle. And let's see if I can bevel that too. It doesn't look too crazy. There's a lot of geometry right there. But it still comes out really nice. And you can... Uh, shade it smooth and then let's see do I have the auto smooth on here I don't so I got to come down to the vertice area 
excuse me, the vertex area, drop down my normals, and check on auto smooth. And now I've got this little hard surface model, and I want these edges. I want every one of those edges on there. So what you can do is go through and add some more detail to this if you want. There's a million and one things that uh, we could actually do to this. But I'm going to keep it very simple. And I will move that building off. And now I'm going to drop in... Let's see. Let's just drop in a cylinder. I'll scale it down. I don't want to do too much with this one. This is going to be like one of those little tower pieces. And I can do a little bit of inset work here. And just keep this extremely simple. It'll look kind of good. Be like a little uh, beacon, if you will. Alright, that's actually not too bad. I'll go to Edge Select. And Forward Slash. Back out, apparently. <laughs> there we go. The Forward Slash helps you not have to do all that zoom work. And so I can chamfer this down. Maybe add a couple of bevels just to give it a little definition. Could add two or three loop cuts on there. Place them wherever I want. Kind of scale this thing down. Perfect. Nice and done. Don't forget to forward slash back out if you did. So I've got three buildings. I'm going to throw in a UV sphere. I'll scale it down kind of considerably. And then I want to scale it. See, I'll scale it on the Z and just make it like this pill style building. Very simple. G and X, wherever it went. G and X. And now you really want some other funky things in there, like five or six buildings would be pretty good. So I'm actually going to throw in an Icosphere as well and probably not do much to it. So let me just apply that scale to everything. And that looks good. So now we want to do, kind of move that off to the side. Let's bring back our circle with Alt-H and let's pull out a screen. As now we've got these buildings. We'll uh, select all of them, press M, put them in a new collection, get real creative. I'm going to call it Buildings 1. Double tap Enter to get rid of that. And now my buildings is going to be up here if you check out the hierarchy it that is going to be my instances right so it looks like i've got a light in here so i'm going to pull that light out of the collection one two three four five okay so that's good and that light i can actually make a new collection i'll call that render and i'll drop the light in there and then i can just remove that for now Kind of keep things nice and clean. So if you've got the add-on installed, it's in the end panel. So select the circle, or rather our plane. Press N and come up to IA Scatter. There's a few other options here, but the main workflow is right here. You just click IA Scatter, and it's going to instantly put your proxy instances out. And if you don't want to see these buildings, you can hide them, but I'm going to leave them there because I'm going to have to like resize them a little bit probably. Which you can do inside of the node. You don't have to do that manually. You can do them all at one time. So in order to get this to change, you just go to the collection, find building one, use collection. And whereas this all looks pretty cool, it's way too big. Now there's a few things you can do to change all this. You come down to the scaling area. You have a uniform random scale minimum and maximum. If you change the minimum to one, everything ends up being the same size. So I mean, you could offset that just a little bit so you can change things. Now, if I want to change all of these at one time, I can come down to the random scale minimum and maximum. I can left click drag and kind of bring all these down to something maybe a little more reasonable. Or you can like grab this one, maybe, and I'll forward slash it. Maybe you could scale it down and then scale it up a little bit. Something like that. And then I'll just apply the scale right here. And that's one way, or rather two ways, you can do some adjustments. But you want some fatter buildings and some skinnier buildings. You want some odder looking buildings. And if we scroll back up to the top, 
we will see our density maximum, which you can increase this considerably. If you've got a real slow computer, don't do that. Click lower viewport density or click use proxy. I like clicking for bounding box, the convex, because the convex hull proxy, because that looks a lot more like buildings. And so I can bring this density up pretty high and get my, uh, my buildings to show up. Now, if I really want to make everything like nice and thick, if you will, like it looks a little bit better, I'll leave my uniform random scale at 0.3 for everything. And then if you want it to look really good, you can't see what it looks like. So you got to just keep in mind, you know, make these simple adjustments, keep the lower on. But I think for most PCs, you should be able to at least see what your buildings look like. So let's bring up the density quite a bit and you know, whatever your PC can handle. And you see, these are all clipping, right? And that will actually look really good and really unique. Um, especially if you get a sci-fi kit with buildings that are like pre-made to look like they're supposed to go together. But if you don't like that, you can have a distance. So I'll say the distance minimum is like 0.1 and then you get like 99% less clipping. There's still a little bit. So you could, you know, point two. And now your your maximum density isn't gonna, it's like plus one disc, right? When you're doing the, um, all the randoms and the uh, random Euler. <laughs> it's such a crazy name. The random Euler and all that stuff, which you can attach to this, by the way. Um, yeah, so if you want it spread out, you can do that. But I'm not going to do that. I'm going to leave it at zero because I want it to all clump up, in the, especially for the purpose of the tutorial. So what we want to do now is drop in a UV sphere. G and Z to kind of bring it down. You can scale it down a little bit if you want and apply the scale. No big deal. And what I want to do is I'm going to... Come over here and this guy's got a few presets so the object info i'm going to ta attach the geometry to the raycast as the target and this looks like i just dropped in sphere zero two it's not going to show it all right i got too many things in here probably no big deal let's see yeah if you just click on it here you can see it in the hierarchy so i'll click back and then i'll just drop this object in I can delete that one and attach this geometry. Now you see we have a change here. And I, apparently I need to be in solid mode. <laughs> Can't really see what I'm doing. So if you move this up and down now, it's going to start acting. And it's not, the settings aren't there. It's going to start acting like a Raycast setting because it does have Raycast nodes. So if you were to grab this and hit tab and jump into this massive node group network, you will find... A raycast setup which can actually be modified if you happen to know raycasting now you can play around with the settings here and get used to it um, but the one thing you're going to want to do is change this from original to relative so that way when you're moving this thing around and you can't see what's going on there but when you're moving that around you can change the geometry uh, distribution of the buildings so what we can do now is pull up the Raycast and the Expand Target. That's your one, pretty much your one control for it. Like I said, though, if you know the Raycasting nodes very well, you can go in, modify it, and make it your own output. So what we can do is kind of change the sensitivity up. I'll invert it. And so now if you bring this up, you're literally controlling the shape of the distribution, which is very helpful and super cool. So now if you don't want to do that, I'll disconnect that for just a moment. I can use weight for distribution. And I will control tab over, grab weight paint, and then I can start painting. And as you're doing that, make sure to turn off this invert switch or it will hide your geometry. And so now if I want to paint very specifically then I can do that. And then you can bring up your density max as you see fit. And also, you can invert the weight map. <laughs> so nothing shows up 
uh, where you actually have the weight distribution. So I'm not going to use weight for distribution. I'll uh, control tab back to object mode. And I want to reconnect for the ray casting because that is the effect I'm going for. And I will re-invert that. Let's see, I'm having this feeling I want to just scale this up and make it a little bit grander. I'll go ahead and use the proxy instances for this. I'll turn this up to 2000. G and Z kind of bring this thing up. Yeah, just scale this up too a little bit. Because that does have a little bit to do with how it's going to distribute it. All right, so I don't like the size of these. They're really big. So what I want to do is I'm just going to take each one of these into my forward slash. And I'm going to scale them down a good bit. And it shouldn't take too terribly long. Make sure you apply all those. You don't waste your time. And like one or two of these, I'll leave like a little bigger because I want them to protrude up. And so by the time I make it to this one, I think this one's fine. I'm not going to mess with that one. And this one, what we can do is I will kind of scale it. Let's bring it up. I may scale it down just a little bit. I feel like chopping this off. So I'm going to grab face mode, go into Z frame. I'll grab that and I'm going to chop off those bottom faces because I don't need them. That's extra geometry, kind of like wasting my space and my time. And I think that probably be good right there. It's like this little dome uh, setting for the city. All right, so I paused it just so I could kind of scale those down. You can put this anywhere you want. There's literally no wrong there. Now let's see, do I have my distance still set? Doesn't look like it. All right, so I'll bring this density value up. And don't forget to adjust your target geometry for the ray casting so you can kind of see if it's populating uh, properly or not or you're just adding too many of these. I'll use proxy for this because I'm going to bump this up to... 15,000. Okay, that's not enough. I'll do 50,000 for now. Okay, 50,000 looks pretty good. That's about what I wanted for this like cityscape look. So now I can... And if you turn off the viewport density, you can see that's it's actually starting to slow down the viewport. But that's why you have these settings on here, so you can do that. So I could turn that off. And I'm actually going to create a save point because I want to test something out so I'll just call this beta city because it's a little space city I'll make sure to save that and then I'm gonna turn off the proxy and yeah it's fine it didn't cancel anything so you get a better look at what's going on here I don't like that building so much so let's see I think that was the UV sphere so if I go to the sphere and forward slash yeah this thing is just terrible. So I'm going to make it a lot smaller. And this is just my little quick city here. And then you've got these which are pretty heavily populated too. So I guess I could turn that down as well. So I wasn't going to scale that one down. But it looks crazy. So there we go. That's somewhat better. All right, the cool thing is you turn on the proxy like this, and what I want to do is I'll control spacebar so I can see everything. You can kind of populate this however you want. I'm going to, let's see, is that off center? Nope, looks good. It's just an optical conclusion. So I'll leave it about right there. Looks pretty good for my, my city. Now what I want to do is put in like, Oh, I don't know. One big building. Maybe there's this crazy pyramid right here. Kind of have like this extra piece in here. Anyways, if you had the building kit, you would get a better idea. But I'm not spending $65 for a building kit. But if you can model out buildings very well, this would be nice. All right, real quick. Uh, you notice a lot of these are protruding through. I'm not going to fix all of that right this minute, but if you want to, here's how you do it. Grab one of your buildings, forward slash, press 1, square it up, 
go to options, turn on origin. Then we can just hit G and Z and kind of move that down. Somewhere close to the bottom should be good enough. Then if you snap back out of here and go back, obviously not all of them are fixed, but you'll notice that the you can see at the bottom, there's actually a little shading where you can see where I did it. It doesn't have to be perfect. We're just looking at the top side anyways. All right, so Shift-A, I'm going to drop in a camera, and then I'm going to take up this view, like looking into the city. And actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go straight for the lighting. So I'm just going to make this scene real quick. And I'm going to jump over into Cycles. And I want to kind of see how this plays out. So I'm going to control space bar back over. And I'll go to my world settings. I'll go to color. And I'm going to go to sky texture. Now the, the Nishta texture only works in Cycles. But the other ones work in Eevee. So if you're just kind of stuck with Eevee, there's no shame in it. Um, so what I want to do is check my viewport shading okay here we go scene lights and scene world there we go now i can see my my sky and everything so let's get this thing calmed down a little bit this could probably go to point one on the sun intensity this one could probably go to point zero five and it'll make it look really nice all right so that's pretty cool i've got some sun scatter going on here oh <laughs> That's my light actually doing that. I've got this custom light that I made. I make I turn lights into node groups so they'll cast noise patterns. I've got a tutorial on that and hardly anybody watched it. So you missed out. All right, so I've got this funky custom light going on and I'm really not going to change it too much. I like I like what's going on here. The one thing I do want to do is lock the camera to view. So I'm going to lock it to the view. And I'm going to kind of play around with this. And probably right about here. And what I want to do is go to object properties for this. I don't want this showing up in the render. So visibility. And I don't want that in the render. Right? doesn't matter where it's at right now. So that's fine. And the plane and everything else looks good. So with the camera selected... I'm going to go ahead and get myself a timeline. Make sure I'm on frame one. And you can kind of, instead of playing with the mouse, you can get the, I um, uh, just can't stand these sidebars. And you can middle mouse wheel in the middle of this thing, get it right. You can hit the left and right arrows to kind of get it where you want. So I insert a location rotation scale. Now go from global to local and then hit G and Z. Yeah, okay, so you can move back and forth. Pretty cool. And I'll move over to like frame 100 and I'll hit G and Z. Hit I, location, rotation, scale. I'll move this all the way out to 250. And now I can, I can do some pretty cool stuff here. I can begin to turn this in G and Z and like come down into the top of the city. And then hit R and X. Kind of rotate that in G and Z a little bit. Maybe add some of this stuff in right here. And I will just insert. It's just very basic. It doesn't have to be anything too special. I want to lead in and have this little sweep around. So let's see if I actually clipped through anything. Okay, it looks pretty cool. Then if you don't have it, you're going to need uh, camera Shakeify. It's absolutely free. Oh, I had my timeline over here. Uh, camera Shakeify is free. I'll put a link in the description. So I'll just add in, let's see, the spaceship shake. And this is controlled by the influence and the scale. So the amount of jumping it does, the amount of shaking it does. So if I'm coming in, it looks like a spaceship, right? And I can also keyframe in. So if I wanted to, say, go to frame 1 and have this extremely low, I'll hit I and then move out to, I think, like 1. We'll just do 100. 
and it's going to get really shaky as it's coming in. So insert. <laughs> I didn't mean to do that. Control Z back. So I'll just tap I over this. I'm just so used to putting in those keyframes. All right, so bring it back and let's kind of see. It should get a little bit shaky. Whoa, yeah, okay, looks good. And then it'll shake a little bit more. And you can add more keyframes in. You can add in extra cameras if you want to get really fancy. I think that's pretty good. And I've got keyframes in, so it doesn't matter with my camera now. But I'm still going to pull that off of camera view. Now what we want to do real quick is I'm going to grab the buildings one at a time. I'm actually going to show you a cool way. Let's see, which one do I actually want to start with? The second cube is probably going to be the right one. Okay, so what we do is I'm going to jump over to the shading tab. Actually, I hate that tab. So I'll just stay in my main view here and I'll pull up my timeline and I'm going to switch this to the shader editor. Go into the EV engine. Maybe get like a little bit of a zoom here. And I've got Blender Kit. So if you don't have Blender Kit, you're going to need that. Go to Materials. Type in Windows. And hit Enter. Now effectively choose whatever you want. Right? So I can get this funky one with the... Uh, looks like a uh, like an apartment building where i can go with this facade right here i actually am pretty partial to this one see if it even loads blender kit uh, just did an update so hopefully it's working now because i wasn't getting a whole lot of compatibility going on all right i guess i just have to point somewhere else in the mesh so this this comes up looking like rather crazy i don't like that well look at that clipping let's pull this up and go to view and i'll pull the world or rather like the viewport clip start all the way back to 0 0.001 that's annoying all right so what we can do wow we got an s curve on this one someone did a little extra work that's not usually this nice what i'm going to do is i'm going to take this from uv to object on the vector and it's going to look like mud for a second but just go from flat to box on all of these so as you do that, you'll start seeing some results very slowly, but surely. And now once I go to box on all of them, I want to make sure everything else is plugged in. This placement, everything looks pretty good. I might have to mess around with that curve though. So now I should be able to take this scale and bring it up. Get rid of that. And just a matter of kind of like lining it up so it's somewhat sensible. Doesn't have to be perfect, I think, right? About there looks pretty good. So now I can kind of dump that for a second. And I want to jump into edit mode. And I'm going to grab these corners with face select. Let's see, can I grab this top? Or is it going to be a real pain? Let's go to wireframe here. All right, well, I'll start with this one. And I'm going to assign a new material. So I go to the material tab, click new, or the plus sign, click new, and then assign. Okay, and what that's going to do is it's going to blank that off right there. So now I'm going to select this one and assign it. Oops, there we go. And... I don't think we need that for the top, so I'm just going to center that up, go into wireframe, I'll grab all that and assign that as well. This one I'll actually give it a new material, assign it, and I'll just go ahead and call this a mix uh, BSDF here, a little mix shader, and I'll make this one a glass and a transparent. And now let's see what's going on. Not sure I even assigned that, but let's see. All right, so that's pretty cool. And now for this material, you can do whatever you want with it. I'm not going to get too fancy. But if you wanted to get back in the Blender Kit here and just type in, like, concrete. And you can pull up some kind of, like, concrete. And it should apply in. There we go. Okay, not too amazing. I probably would unwrap that. But uh, this is not going to be like seen up close. 
Let's see, how does this look in cycles? Yeah, it's actual glass. Now, if you want this to look like glass in Eevee, there's a few tricks for that. Let's see if I can get that to work real quick. I'm going to come down to the Material tab for that material, and I'll just call it Glass. And for this one, I'll go to Viewport Display, and you should be able to go from Opaque to Alpha Hashed, and boom, you got Eevee Glass. Now, from here, you could just like add a little tint of color to it, or you could go into the shader editor on this one. You could pull up the nodes, and you kind of play around with this thing a little bit on the shader and make it a little bit more transparent or a little less. I'm still getting that clipping for some reason. And I think here's where you can change that color. Nah, that's really not going to let me do it. There we go. So some kind of like neat little yellow. And I don't necessarily like this setup. Um, I'd like to see... Let's see here. Let's do an add shader, perhaps. Drop that in. And I'll drop in a mission. Probably should mix that, but I'm not doing it all. All right, and then this can be a little bit yellow, and you can bring that strength up to like 3 or 4 or 5 or whatever you're feeling. I don't really like that color too much that nice lighter blue looks pretty good so now if we jump out and jump back in we're in the material preview i'll go to scene lights and scene world and remember our world shader doesn't really work too good here i'm going to go back to my layout actually and turn all that on now if we come back over to this uh, the render tab and switch it to Eevee. For the viewport, I can put in something like 4096. You could do 1024 if you um, don't have a faster PC. I just don't see how that messes up the computer. But okay, so let's pull this out. Did I literally just shift that? Okay, so what I want to do is kind of go through this. I'm going to turn off the proxy so we can kind of see what's going on and I've got this neat little look going on um, one of the things you can do is turn on the ambient occlusion and you can turn on bloom and bloom looks so good and for the motion blur obviously since we've got an animation going on all right so I took a moment because I really wanted a better result for everybody so you can have more fun with this and a really really cool result so what I'm gonna do is go in and take the cube number two and make sure you've got that um, selected so you know you've got the right bsdf for that and what i want to do is change this thing up just a little bit and i was kind of messing around with this so i'm going to delete everything except for the output so i don't lose the glass and let's go ahead and maximize this but still be able to see what's going on so from the surface we can pull out the add shader and then from this shader we can pull out a mix from this one we'll pull out emission and we're gonna mix all these together real nice from the bottom shader we can pull out a principal BSDF the basic one not the volume but the basic one and then from the top one I want to pull out glass and I could actually go with transparent so it's not that important but let's try it with glass first and see how it ends up looking all right so I've got this emission I've got bloom so if I bring this up you get that really cool effect but it's just one solid color which is kind of nice but it's not what I'm particularly after And now that we're here, this is super simple and you're gonna love this. So from the color of the emission, let's drag out a color ramp. Drop it in. From this position, we're not gonna, I won't drag it out because it always grabs the wrong thing. So I'm just going to right click off of that and type in object. 
and I want the object info node. Super powerful node. If you don't use this, you need to start using it. I'll put random into the factor. And then I'm going to increase the... Uh, well, actually, first of all, we can kind of see what it is doing. So I can actually turn the lights out in essence, but I'm actually increasing the factor of the black color here, so the white and black. So what I want to do is I want to click this a few times, whatever your computer can handle. I'm just going to do four. Then I'm going to go from linear to ease. I'll drop this down. I'll go distribute stops from the left. And now from this color black, I'm going to bring it up to something nice and bright. Make it orange. For the next color, I can bring that gray out of there and I'll call this one blue. Starting to see the difference here. It's starting to look like a big old Christmas tree city. And then I can bring in green, purple or something else. Purple kind of matches my color scheme, like a deeper, darker purple. And then I could leave white for some of those as well. All right, if you want to get a little bit fancier, you could grab something like the orange. And you could actually go down and start adding some keyframes. So I could just add a keyframe here. And as this one goes up, I can have this color change off to green. And then press I and add that keyframe. And then as this is changing, you can have some more variation in there. And actually have a little bit of a color shift going on with keyframes. So it's pretty simple to do. I could start off with this pink here, put a keyframe and buy say frame 120. This is a deep, like darker blue perhaps, or we don't think I have any yellow in there. So let's put some yellow right there and boom. All right, so that's pretty cool. We've got that. I'm gonna go back to the main layout go back to solid mode I can grab this and just put like some kind of basic glass BSDF thing on it let's go mix shader I'll go glass and I will go transparent I can put this to one for perfectly clear point eight is the blender manuals recommendation for uh, glass actually but I think one point three should do pretty nice and you can do this in cycles or you can do this in Eevee. When I do mine, I'm going to render everything out in cycles because I like the look and the light bounces are going to be incredible. And somehow my base had the facades on there, so I deleted that off because I don't want it. I could turn this to like a, a grayish, maybe bring the roughness down, bring the metallic up a little bit, make it look kind of crazy. All right, now I'm gonna have a little more fun and we can stack a node. So I'm gonna do, is I'm just gonna take up the top view, kind of move over under the objects or the model section in Blitter Kit. I can just type in forest and it should have a pretty low poly forest for you right here in the beginning. So I'll just drag and drop that in. It's gonna come in pretty big, but I don't want the forest. I don't want any of that. What I want are the trees. Let's see if I can just select all of them and Alt-P, clear all those parents. All right, good. So now I've got this, and is that an empty? I just want to get rid of all that stuff. So what I want to do is add this into a second collection. So I'll take this, I'll dub it, I'll bring the original geometry into it, but before I actually hook it into anything, I want to definitely change this back down to something like 5. I want to lower the use proxies and lower the viewport density before you actually plug that back into your join geometry, which is where that goes. So now this is live. It just doesn't have a collection that it's going to be working with yet. And that's where the trees are going to come in. So if I jump control spacebar back over, get rid of the blender kit. Alright, so the next thing we want to do is go ahead 
and make a stack on this. So we're going to take this geometry node and we're going to stack it. And what I mean by that is, we're just going to duplicate it. So Shift D, bring the copy over here loose, don't tie it in. And turn the density down to like 5. Make sure that it's on proxy and you can take buildings off. Now we can bring the original geometry from the first node to the base. And we can bring this geometry to the join. And it's now connected here. So what we want to do is kind of clean up our scene a little bit. Make sure to create a nice little save point because you know how Blender can be. And what I'll do is I'm actually going to take... Let's see if I can get it to work. <laughs> What I'll do is I'll take all the collections over here, like the buildings and stuff, and I'm just going to remove all that for now. So I just got these things, and I can actually hide that and hide the camera. So in Blender Kit, under Objects, and if you want, you can actually come down here. You can see Models. What you can do is just type in Forest, and inside the Blender Kit, they've got a low-poly forest with particle system on it so just bring that in and drop it and you could just use the particle system you could grab trees scale them down and do it that way if you want but I don't want that so I'm actually going to delete the particle system grab all the trees hit alt P and clear that parent and now I've got these individual trees I'm gonna want those in a collection so I'll go ahead and tap M and let's see, we'll just new collection, super awesome name. We're going to call it trees or tress apparently because so I can't spell today. So, all right, that's trees. So now we want to distribute that here, but I can't do it the way it is because these, these trees are way too big. So I'm actually going to scale these down just a touch. And I know sometimes when I'm building these models, the, um, the actual origins are not correct. So I'll have to correct that because it's a, it was a sloppy build. It looked like some of the buildings were halfway through the bottom. But I'm just going to make all these as small as possible before I bring them in to the scene. And these also could be... Um, you could take them into geometry nodes if you wanted to. And what you could do is create a new geometry node around this and we'll pull in the is viewport node we can pull in a bool math node and I did a tutorial on this that was uh, got quite a few hits so I think a lot of people saw it but just in case you didn't this is another way you can do things I'm gonna try to pack so much into this uh, try to keep it around 30 minutes if I can type in convex and get the convex hole geometry. Now what you want to do is have this right here turn into a proxy instance with a boolean that's going to be either true or false according to how you set it up. So if you go over here in the modifier panel, this actually has a geometry node attached to it now. So what you would want to do, and all this is fine and good, but none of this actually connects. So the one thing you're going to need is a utilities switch node. Go ahead and drop that in. Now the convex hull is what we're going to want to produce and you can see we've already got that as a convex hull. What we want to do is bring the boolean output. And don't worry that it's a diamond field. Let's just plug it directly in to the switch. This is your true or false. So if you did this you can see it disappears, right? But I'll plug the boolean in here and you can't see it. It's not in our output yet. So we want to take our is viewport. So this is going to tell Blender that this, excuse me, um, it's going to say that this right here is only visible in the viewport. Okay. So you won't be able to see that anywhere else. That's not going to show up in your render just in the viewport because you're using Workbench, which is the render engine for the viewport for the 3d viewport by itself without ev or cycle so take the is viewport plug it into the top boolean and i'll take this one as an output which is our on off switch as you could see again uh, i'm not gonna do that but i'll come back over here so now 
you can switch this to false where it is or true and you'll see that our geometry <laughs> has disappeared don't worry it's not gone we're just switching through the convex hull and the convex hull is not currently in our loadout here it's not in the node network so we take the original tree and bring that over and call it true so when we're on one we're true we're on zero we're false zero is the convex hull true is the tree so if i come back over here to my layout and let me get rid of that uh, annotation layer so if i come back over here this is now going to be let me get the modifier tab true or false and so now if i have 5,000 of these in here i'm good and if you want to copy it to all of them hold down shift select one hold shift right click right click right click right click this one's the active object control ah didn't do that control c and i want to copy those modifiers from the copy attributes menu which is control c and now every one of these can be turned on or off individually so that's super cool and that's one way of doing it if you didn't want to go the other route um, but the node is actually doing all that for us so essentially you would have two sets of controls but i do want to give you another way to do this so if you liked that forest you can go back now you can play with the forest and what i'm actually going to do just to kind of test this as i go along is I'm going to leave part of these um, with my own is viewport. All right, so now we can do, let's see, I'll make sure I did. Yeah, okay, so I got trees in a collection, and some of these are already proxied. So I'm going to hit Alt-H and start bringing some of that back. And now I can bring back my initial collection. And now we've got the setup. We can go to collection, go to trees. And for some reason, I've got trees 001 with the camera, the cone, and the sphere in it. Okay. I don't know how that happened. All right. So what I want to do now is use this collection and distribute these trees across our geometry. Let me just rearrange this so I can actually get in there. Ah, oh, there we go. I was in the forward slash menu. That is one of those problems if you forget what menu you're in like you're in the control space bar you're going to be hurting you'll have to go up and make a a new workspace if you can even get to it all right so a little problem i had to pause the video and i was like where are my trees at because it just dubbed this thing and they should have just shown up and it was trees.001 by the way okay so if I kind of zoom out, I can see my trees. If I zoom out a little bit more, <laughs> I can see my forest way over here. So, not necessarily the best option, but I think that when you do the fix that I'm going to do for this, it's a heck of a lot quicker than searching online for trees. And if you've got some better trees you can just download in, that's fine. But this one just has to do with the origin point. So if I drop down and bring the origins of this tree, I can see it's pretty far away. So I'll just pull up a view where I can get that origin point back over. And you can see some of our geometry is already headed that way. And so this is not obviously very practical. But at the same time, um, this is what you got to do when you strip the uh, forest, if you will, on a particle system. But I'll pause the video, fix these trees up, and like I said, you can probably find some other trees somewhere. I just like these, and I'll be right back. All right, so after you've got the origin points on these fixed, and it looks like I got a little bit I can fix on that one. After you've got those fixed, and like I said, that's not a, a scattered. That's just what I did with the forest here. Um, you can go ahead and scale all of these down to a little bit of a smaller size. They fit into the scene ever so nicely. And after just a couple few steps here, you can come back over and let's zoom in a little bit. 
All right, so I adjusted my density max to 500. And if you copied this over, it'll still have the Raycast inverted. You can leave the setting about the same. I did turn density down. I'm not using proxy right this minute, but I do suggest everybody tries to, you know, keep the viewport now resources at a minimum. I create a nice little save point, And then if I click off of the invert, well, now we have a forest completely outside of our city. And we've got a really cool layer. And as, as I move this, I can actually bring, and to zoom in just a little bit so you can actually see what's going on here. If I grab the sphere and hit G and Z to kind of move it down with the inversion, the exact opposite is happening from the other direction for the inversion, right? So my city is shrinking, my forest is growing, or my city is growing, and my forest is shrinking according to our target object. And now if I wanted to switch those two, because I don't like that, I can invert this one, or I can just have the, the forest and the whole thing in there if I want to, and then click the invert for this, and it's the opposite. Now I've got a forest on the inside, and for the trees, I mean, obviously you'd want to populate that a little bit more so it looks nice. All right, and now we've got a little scene here. I just pulled it over into Eevee so we could just take a little look at it. And it's not zooming very well. All right, so I think that actually looks pretty good. Probably could bring the size, uh, the scale, if you will. And I'll just switch back over here and I'll use proxies for the forest. And I could scale the forest down just a touch. And the minimum, I can lower the minimum 0.1 and then bring this one down just a touch as well. And whenever you do that, sometimes you got to bring the density up a little bit. But just remember you have the uh, lower viewport density on sometimes. I apparently don't. So I can put this to like 2500 zero, zero, and populate that. Now that's actually going to look pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and put proxy on this. And I won't use bounding box for the trees. I'll use the convex hull. And now I want to do is kind of, let's make sure the lower density is on for both of these. There we go. So I want to crank this up to like a pretty insane level. That's one of the cool things about IA Scatter is that if I bring this up to 5,000, you don't see that here and you don't get that, you know, complete dampening effect and that huge lag in the viewport. So press zero and I'll grab the camera. I'm going to change the zoom here. I'm going to drop down camera, go to like uh, 48. So I can get just a little bit more in and do a test render. And I want to make sure I don't have anything ridiculous on. So let's do like 50 samples. I'm probably on 4K. No, I'm not. So I want to switch to 4K and I'll do a quick render. And while that's kind of rendering out, this is just a good point to show you. Keep in mind that when you are on a certain frame you can see the motion blur has kicked in so if I jump back over here I want to like see which frame I'm on yeah I'm on frame 82 so there's a lot of motion blur going on which is kind of nice it adds a little something extra but you can see how this is starting to look I think it's pretty cool uh, you could change the scale I'm gonna texture this we could do a little quick compositing and then we will call it a day on this tutorial all right, so I'm going to come over and grab the cone, and I will forward slash on the cone to bring it out. I'm going to jump into Eevee, and I'll turn off the scene lights and scene world just for now. So I've got that standard HDR. Let's see, I always have so much space to kind of try to maximize here. It's never an easy thing. So I'll go ahead and add a material. We'll add a new one. I'm going to do the alpha hash trick again for the blend mode. 
and I can bring the roughness down just a little bit. I do have the transmission up, but I was going to go ahead and turn that down and jump over to the shading tab because I want to change this up a little bit. I'll drop an add shader right here. So we'll get the add shader and I'll drag out a transparent BSDF. Let's go into the material preview. And that's a little too transparent. So I'll bring the roughness and things like perfectly clear. So let's see if I go here and kind of bring this down just a touch on the slider. Should be able to see it. And that alpha hash, when you open the alpha channel, it's a pretty neat transparency. And then I can change the color, something like a nice bright blue. If I want that to be an emission, I can rinse and repeat. Or I should be able to come down here and change the emission as well. Then bring it up to like two maybe. Yeah, I think that's going to look pretty cool. And for this, I can bring the slider all the way up to make it fully transparent. A little bit more. There we go. Now I'll jump back over into the layout. And it's going to give it like this kind of look I was going for. Yeah, it's pretty cool. All right. All right, so all the buildings are not textured. I'll leave that to you. You can go through and texture the other buildings the way you want. You can add anything you like. One more thing I will do is I'm going to put the cursor to world origin and I will drop in a UV sphere. And apparently that jumped into my trees, so hopefully it doesn't crash me. That's one of those things you got to watch out for. Okay, so let me see, grab this sphere. It's a little slow at the moment. And let's drag that bad boy out. Alright. It's a good computer. Um, so I want to grab like any view one or three and kind of bring this up just to the edges. Maybe right about there. Then I'll go into wireframe, wireframe, excuse me, edit mode. And I'm going to delete all the faces for the bottom half. And then I'm going to go back in the solid. And I want to duplicate this. But I want to scale it like a tiny little bit. Then I'll come over. And I want to add a wireframe modifier to this. And then you can kind of do this any way you wish. You could change the cage. Let's see, does it have a uh, vertex group, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so all that looks pretty good. And now what you can do is add some materials to these two. So I could add like a little shiny gray metallic for this one, turn the roughness down. I can grab this one, add a new. I'll go in and do a real standard like mix shader, put a glass, and then I can put a transparent and I'll go with something like 1.2 should be pretty good I'll look at that in cycles and see how it looks all right I know the tutorial has gotten insanely long so all I'm gonna do from this point and yeah I deleted that little cone out of there it's kind of bugging so you could put like a some kind of monolith statue or something or if you want but what I'll do is I'll just jump over to Cycles. This doesn't look too bad. Uh, you could clean up the glass a little bit. But what I want to do is make sure I've removed the transparent so I can see the background. I'm going to pull up a Blender Kit HDR and I'll just put in Space. And probably like the first thing that comes out is probably going to be good enough for me. Uh, you could do this over planet Earth. Stratosphere? That looks pretty cool. Let's try that one real quick. It's a little bright. I think I'd come down to like half of that setting. And now if you're inside of the dome, looks like maybe you're looking out at the planet. Looks pretty cool. So anyways, I really appreciate everybody watching. Smash that subscribe. Smash that like. If you've got any questions, let me know. 
I'll get a final render. I'll share it in my community page on YouTube. And hey, if you guys want to have your pictures, you know, there, like some renders, you just show them off. You did something amazing because you're 100 times more artistic than I am. Then send it over to Phoenix After Ashes at Outlook.com. And I am more than happy to give you a little uh, Creative Commons style attribution. Like I'll, there we go, I'll give you a shout out. Anyhow, guys, I will see you in the next tutorial lesson.